from Cracker Island, it was born. Gorillas are back with a brand new studio album called Cracker Island. And for the first time since Plastic Beach in 2010, there's a larger story at play here. Every Gorillaz album has had some story here and there, like what the characters get up to, whether or not Murdoch goes to jail again. But this time, there is so much more. If you were a casual fan who only watches their music videos, then you would be so confused with their newest release, Silent Running. Last time, it was the band at a hospital after getting arrested. Someone gets brought back to life and Murdoch is wearing a funny costume. Now 2D is being fed to this monster by this cult when Murdoch's perfume falls into the monster's mouth and explodes, turning everyone into dust except for this one chick. What is going on? Unfortunately for me, yet fortunate for you, I am a no-life gorillas fan who has been religiously keeping up to date on everything and have been theorizing since this phase began. Uh, because of this, Silent Running was pretty satisfying for me to watch because it felt like it rewarded me for paying attention throughout the phase. And that's what I plan on doing with this video, trying my best to explain what in the world is going on with these new videos, using their Instagram posts, 2D Stewart podcast, Murdoch's YouTube shorts, the band's interactions on Discord, and even some posts from TikTok. I can confidently put together a story that I, for the most part, believe to be correct. Another thing too is because of the spread out and slow nature of how this story was unveiled, it's hard to pinpoint exactly when events happened. Plus, there's a lot of instances where tiny yet important things happen in an island of time. I still have my questions, and some of this is pure speculation, but I'll get to those near the end. Without further ado, here is the story of Cracker Island so far. Our story begins when gorillas move into a house in the hills above Silver Lake, LA to record their new album. Murdoch keeps getting distracted by their neighbors, more specifically the head hostess, Moonflower, who he has the hots for. Another thing distracting him is a beautiful prophecy, a prophecy stating that he should start a cult with him as the leader. The prophecy was very clear on that last part. Russell and Noodle opposed this at first, but Murdoch reassured them that this is a nice cult for nice people. After a chat, Russell and Noodle agreed to join in hopes of bringing people together to make a better world. And thus, the last cult was born. A great day of reckoning was nigh, and there was lots of work to be done. So, at a diner, the band divided their work by each person. Murdoch would be the great leader and use his charm and shamelessness to expand the flock of the last cult. Russell was named Seeker of Truth and would use his intellect and Googling skills to shed the light on Murdoch's prophecy, which was, at best, pretty vague. Noodle became the scholar, studying ancient texts in order to write the last cult's doctrine, and Tootie became the chosen one, chosen mainly to sweep the mansion floors and launder the sacred robes. Murdoch has Tootie dig a lot of holes too, for some reason. Uh, and Russell begins watching a broadcast called the Static Channel, saying that it has coded messages hidden within the static that will lead them to the promised land. One day, 2D orders a pizza. He hears knocking at the door, thinking it's the delivery guy, but it's their neighbor, Moonflower. She came to tell Murdoch to stop looking over the fence at her. To impress her, Murdoch buys an obelisk, like the one that she has, but hers is taller and more freakier, which she doesn't even notice. This annoys Murdoch, along with her calling him Martin. However, he still tells 2D that Moonflower is the one and that he loves her. So at this point, Noodle starts to wonder if this whole cult thing was already starting to go sideways. Either way, Murdoch tasks 2D with painting the obelisk with six coats of the last cult's signature colors, pink. Soon after, 2D goes next door to have a cup of tea and he finds out that they're a cult too known as the Forever Cult. They take a liking to 2D, saying that he's welcome anytime. Murdoch is heartbroken by this. How could she prefer someone so lowly over him? These feelings would have to wait because Russell was getting closer to solving the prophecy. While Noodle finds a pamphlet from the people next door detailing a free aura exam, 2D asks her if she wants to go, but she declines, saying that nothing is free. Next door, Moonflower asks 2D to join the Forever Cult, saying that he won't have to dig so many holes. When talking about Moonflower, 2D says that she is much kinder than Murdoch. She even says that he has a nice aura. 
Meanwhile, Russell is very in tune with the static channel, writing nonsense on the whiteboards and making a mess of the wallpaper. The band start to wonder if he had lost it, yet Murdoch still has hope for him. Noodle finds a movie poster from 1923 called The Hills Are Hungry. The lead actress, Lady Hollowdown, looks suspiciously similar to Moonflower. After looking her up, Noodle finds that she was a big shot in the early days of Hollywood. She bought up land and was a big investor in something called Hollywood Land. Reviews for her movie were really bad though, but Noodle had one conclusion. The Forever Cult and that movie studio were one and the same. Then Murdoch stops broiling himself to extract his divine essence and plans on bottling it for the masses, calling it the essence of Murdoch. This leads to a very unpleasant and toxic smell that Noodle isn't too fond of. Russell, on the other hand, is getting ready for the bumpy ride that is the way to the promised land. After almost a whole year of watching the static channel, Russell believes that the portal to the promised land will open above the Hollywood sign at New Year. He shows up, bag packed and ready to go, and nothing happens. After this, Russell is so tuned into the static channel that he has stopped responding. Even Murdoch is worried. Some minor yet important, I guess, events that happen are um, Moonflower gives 2D a picture of an eyeball and tells him to put it above his bed and then it'll watch him sleep. Uh, and then another one is Murdoch tells 2D to dig another hole, saying that the new him is at the bottom uh, and then the ground begins to shake as, as he's digging. However, things start to pick up when Moonflower tells 2D that Murdoch is a false prophet and he believes her. Not because of the cult thing, but because Murdoch told 2D that he would pay him for painting the obelisk, but never did. He's a false prophet. Murdoch didn't take too kindly to this and calls him a non-believer, saying that he's not going to the promised land. 2D is sad about this, but at least he can get the peppermint tea the neighbors make for him. He says that they grow it in the garden and that it tastes funny, but it's so good. So good, in fact, that he may back and go get another. And at one point, he never comes back to Gorillas' HQ. Noodle gets worried and goes next door, only to find that the compound is empty, all but a ripped piece of paper with a cryptic message, potentially putting 2D in danger. Murdoch is still upset, going on a rant about 2D, calling him a traitor, sworn enemy of the last cult. He's even wearing their signature color of blue. Noodle thinks the Forever Cult kidnapped 2D, but Murdoch thinks he's getting back at him for the Paula Cracker incident 20 years ago, where Tootie's girlfriend cheated on him with Murdoch. Making things more stressful is Russell, who has been up for 12 days straight watching that static channel, not even reacting to his favorite muffins being thrown away. However, over a period of time, Tootie still hasn't come back, and Murdoch starts to believe Noodle, becoming worried and pleads for Tootie to come home. However, Russell finally cracks the code and realizes just how much danger 2D is in. On February 8th, 2023, under the Hollywood sign, there will be a rupture in time that will allow the forever cult to stay forever young. They just need a 100% pure blue flower to sacrifice, and that flower being 2D. They have theoretically been doing this ritual every 25 years, starting in 1923 with Lady Hollowdown, which is an anagram for Hollywood land, the band makes a plan to save 2D. Drugged out of his mind, 2D slurps on the smoothie the Moonflower gave him. He has a sense of hope and joy seeing the sacred wheel being prepared. Everything is going to be okay. And finally, we have reached the silent running video, where we see 2D tied up to the sacred wheel and being lowered down to be sacrificed to the monster seen in the Heels Are Hungry poster so that they can keep the forever cult young. 2D's bandmates come to save him, but it seems like even Moonflower has a change of heart when 2D shoots her a heart-piercing look. After the last cult's cover is revealed, the two factions battle it out. Murdoch goes to save 2D, even though Moonflower was already doing that, but he isn't as strong as her, so the weight of 2D and the wheel begin to pull him forward. This slams him against the well, causing his essence of Murdoch to fall out of his robe. Seeing 2D free-falling, the monster gets excited and jumps for him, not knowing he's actually about to intake pure 100% toxic substances. This causes the monster to explode, saving 2D and killing everyone else. My theory is that with the monster dead, the cult returned to the age they were supposed to be without him, meaning that they would be dust. 
Moonflower, on the other hand, simply falls over unconscious. The explosion from the monster causes the police to arrive, and Murdoch flees the scene while Noodle and Russell check on 2D. Although Russ doesn't seem to be in the best mind space. With the band arrested, this is where the music video for Cracker Island starts. After being arrested, the three were taken to Los Angeles County Hospital where they were questioned and I assume checked on, especially 2D and Russell. A heavily drugged 2D is telling the police what went down, while Russell is once again watching the static channel. Noodle is trying her best to do damage control. Russell then seems to get possessed by some force or entity and walks over to the group. Uh, we see someone in the background of some shots, most notably when the ghost, later revealed to be Moonflower, gets up. And here is where we get to the extremely speculative side, because I believe this to be Murdoch, who is bringing his loved one back with some cult power. The man learned how to fly, why can't he bring back someone he loves? She reveals herself to him and morphs into who Murdoch recognizes as her great-grandmother, Lady Hollowdown. But, I think they are one and the same due to the monster's powers. They share a kiss as a news report of what just went down is on TV, and 2D sings, there's nothing left to say. And that's the story of Cracker Island so far. I wonder if the story is completely over just yet. There are some hints saying so, like Murdoch calling this the Hollywood ending and them promoting the video for Silent Running with The Saga Concludes. But then there are other lingering questions, like what about the video Stevie Nicks said that she was going to be in, otherwise she wouldn't have collaborated? Or what possessed Russell in the video for Cracker Island? Better yet, what's his face that keeps popping up? What about that, is that anything? Other than that, there are some more lore-related questions I have, like, did Murdoch start the last cult to impress Moonflower? If not, where did he hear the prophecy from? Did he start it for higher power or to have followers? What told Russell about the static channel and that the answers were there? What happens next? Where does Skinny8 fit into this? My best guess is that the live performance would be like an epilogue of sorts. Why did Murdoch make 2D dig so many holes? Like, what is the purpose? All of that aside, I really enjoyed this phase of Gorillaz, both in the music and storytelling departments. I felt like they could do so much more with the characters besides appearing in like disconnected music videos and believe that they could just do so much more. And they did. This was a fun story to follow in real time and a fun one to put together and theorize for. Hopefully they do more with it, but I would be happy if they didn't. Thank you, Jamie Hewlett, and everyone who put this together, and Damon Albarn for making outstanding music. Now, do me a favor, and stop appearing in videos and let the characters explain the meaning of songs! You shouldn't exist to them! Thank you for watching my content. I know this is a bit different compared to everything else done on the channel, but, you know, it's nice to branch out and do other things every once in a while. If this does well, then I might make more videos like this. Oh, who am I kidding? I definitely am. I had too much fun making this. Anyway, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching my video.